Hi everyone. Today we're, I'm going to talk about HTML, but rather than actually go through the history and explain everything to you about what it is, I want to focus on how to practically use it. Now I will do my best to offer some explanations, but for the most part, you will need to uh, learn all of that. If you're interested in learning more about it, I encourage you to look into it yourself. Um, that'll help teach you how to research if you're not used to it, which is extremely important if you're going to be doing any sort of development. You need to learn how to research, how to look up stuff, how to find information. So, before I get started, you will need some sort of text editing program. Um, if you want to use just the default notepad that comes with Windows, you can. This is actually what I learned HTML on. Um, there was no IntelliSense back in the day, <laughs> at least not for this thing. So I had no choice but to learn it, which I, I had to learn it by hand, which was actually really great because it made me memorize everything. So I could be, I had, I kept having to go back and forth between this and the browser and I only had one screen. So, you know, you, you memorize, you memorize stuff. So you don't have to do that. But when you get into a professional environment, that quickly becomes cumbersome. Um, and so there are other tools. There are other tools such as Notepad++. Um, and this allows you to do the same thing. And it has a little bit better IntelliSense. Not that much, to be honest. Still better than... Uh, plain old notepad in my opinion uh, There's also one called brackets Which is actually what I used after notepad And there's another one actually called Adobe Dreamweaver You can use this to make websites too I, when I used it, I really, really, really didn't like it. Now, maybe it's changed since then, but it, this is not free. It costs money. Uh, how much money does this cost? Single app. So for Dreamweaver, it'd be 21 bucks a month. So it's around 23 bucks a month. So it's not bad. And if you're a student, you can get all apps for 20 bucks so if you can prove you're a student you get all of their apps wow okay so 20 for the first year 30 months after that regularly it's uh 60 man that's not bad maybe i should get this how much is this all apps shoot man i'd freaking pay that Plus Adobe stock? I'm going to have to look into that. Okay, so this is brackets. Um, it's a high-end version of Notepad++, essentially. But it's, a, it's, a, it's way better than that. That was kind of insulting. I didn't mean that. It's better than that. If you like it, use it. There's also another one. Um, and if you're ever looking for alternatives to things... I recommend a site called Alternative.2. Okay, that is definitely not it. Where is it? Alternative2.net. You can come here and type in some software. It may not have everything, but um, you can see alternatives. So there's a Atom, there's Sublime Text. Vim, Jetit, NetBeams, but we are going to be using, or at least I am going to be using Visual Studio Code. It's developed by Microsoft. It's free. It is literally, in my opinion, the top IDE. Um, I dare say it surpasses Visual Studio. Not quite yet, but it's going to get there. No doubt in my mind, this is the uh, future of development right here. I mean, it's just, it's too awesome. So, which is surprising. They, they came up with a really good thing here, Microsoft did. It's available on Windows, Mac, or Linux. So, but let's get started. We're going to make a form, a form 
is a like you know kind of like Twitter. Twitter has forums. What is this? A forum essentially is this: some user posts a topic, and people respond to that topic. That's pretty much what a forum is. Now, in Twitter's case, it's actually called a microblog, I think, unless the terminology changed. But uh, what we'll be building is something similar to what vBulletin has. So we're going to be using uh, vBulletin. It's one of the top paid software forums. Uh, sorry, the top paid for forum software available on the market, as far as I'm aware. There might be another one called IP Board. I'm not sure. I had never used IP Board. So I'm not sure, but essentially this is what a forum is. You have a bunch of categories and these categories called forums can have subcategories called subforums. And within these categories, you can have, um, well, not in this one, apparently you can have, um, topics. We call them threads. And in these threads, you have the topic, the body of the topic, essentially the meat of the message they're trying to get across, and then people just responding to it, talking about it. So you have not only do you have an, a public place to discuss things, but you also have history and tracking. Typically, there's also uh, user profiles, and these user profiles have stuff like activities, about, media, stuff they've posted. So that's what we're going to be working on. Now, this uh, recording is running a little long, but I, we'll just call this the prepper. And that's all I have for this for right now. In the next video, we'll get started in making this using first HTML. After that, we'll move into CSS. Then we'll include the JavaScript. Then we need to pick a language to write this in, whether as whether using it for the, both the front end and the back end, or just for the back end, and we'll talk about that, the pros and cons of each. Then we'll move into using frameworks to help us develop it more easily, setting up databases, infrastructure, things like that. You will need to install a bunch of stuff on your computer, but we'll get to that later. For now, we're going to talk about HTML. Thanks for watching.